Okay, everyone, welcome to the weekend wrap up for October 21st, 2023. Wild week in the market. We're going to go over everything when it comes to crypto, when it comes to FX, when it comes to underlying stocks and ETFs. As always, you can support me by going to statsedtrain.com. Sign up for the email list there. Make sure you're emailed these videos along with a blog post, uh, my watch list, some individual names there as well. If you're interested in my scanning and charting tool trade ideas, you can go to tradeideas.com, use Stats Edge for 15% off at checkout. Now, without further ado, we're going to get into it. Again, we go through the weekly charts, we kind of zoom out, see what happened this week, what we think is going to happen in, into the next week. These are usually longer videos, so grab your coffee. Uh, for me, I actually have just an energy drink here you'll probably see me sip on throughout. Now, just here again, Stats of Trading, if you want to check it out, email list right here. You can try uh, trade ideas right here just by clicking on this link and going for Stats Edge on checkout will save you 15%. So we're going to start here. And we are actually going to, as always, go up and start with Bitcoin. Still stuck within this range, got back over the 200 week moving average, which is obviously a good thing had a really strong week here. But we are at this level that we had resistances a few times, eventually, one of these things will have to break. And for me, that will be a trigger to enter a trade either on a breakout long, or a breakout short. But until it's out of this range, I'm not going to get as excited as I've seen a lot of people get recently. Gold is very, very interesting. So last week, I talked about how I was interested in getting a pullback after this massive weekly candle in gold to get some sort of pullback to buy. I didn't get a pullback. I did get some consolidation. We can go here on the four hour chart. So I did buy some gold over this little flag that we had right here. Good trade so far on that one, still holding uh, holding that position. Looking strong, but nearing this area of resistance. Now, I am bullish gold in the long term simply because of this, uh, go out even further, this potential cup and handle look where we have this massive multi-year cup and handle, massive multi-year cup, and then a massive multi-year handle. So a breakout here could get pretty wild on this name. A nice potential push out here, nice strong push here on uh, gold. It's very, very interesting. Funny enough, silver, not really participating moving moving up, but not really participating to the level gold is showing that that of the two instruments is definitely the one you want to look at. So we're gonna look at euro in the dollar, slowly kind of dealing with and potentially bouncing off of this anchored VWAP right here. Been talking about how when we pulled back into this, I was looking long and I've been buying and, and selling and just trading to the long side on the shorter term chart for a couple weeks now, looking to be able to hold some if we get a breakout. Now, are we going to go back to highs? I don't know, but even a bounce off of this level into the uh, say 108 could be an interesting and a, and a nice trade there. Same if we look at pound dollars, same kind of look. We have this anchored view up from the low acted as support right here, also acting as support right here, consolidating, if we can get a bounce off there, it could be a little bit of an oversold bounce to play. Uh, looking at the other side with USD CHF, say kind of the inverse, right? We had a nice push here, but this is actually reacted pretty wildly off of this level and coming back into this lower anchored view app. So I'm gonna see what happens to Frank there, I looked at this, I remember on, I think it was the daily chart. And yeah, I was watching Frank around this level right here, didn't respect that at all, just fell right through. So no trade to be had. Now that we're getting to the anchored view app, I'm going to watch that level to see if we do get a bounce in the other direction here. If we start to see things denoted in dollar moving higher, then it makes sense that things that have dollar as the as the top end of that would be would be moving lower. All that makes perfect sense. Last from the currency space, we have Aussie CAD, uh, something that I've been watching and playing a little bit with actually really great success so far, even though it's a newer instrument to me. And that was I was playing against this candle right here, had a couple long plays that worked out. Now it's back down to that level. So I'm going to watch this is a, a do or die point where I'm interested in both sides of the market. If we end up 
consolidating here and then dropping, then that's fine. I think you have a nice little short on Aussie CAD. If we consolidate here and then break out of this zone again up to these highs, then we could potentially have a breakout long, just areas of interest to keep on watch. So now we're going to get into stocks. And for stocks, I always use trade ideas. If you go to tradeideas.com using the link from statsedgetrading.com, you know we have a test drive starting here for $11. You get to hammer on this program that I use for all of my stuff for uh, two weeks for 11 bucks basically just covers the data fee that they have to pay in order to uh, give you guys real time data. The interesting thing is they're doing and we've been doing this a little bit internally, uh, a, a contest where you are paper trading the guy who gets the largest account value wins. And we're giving away prizes for that. So that's been super fun a little game to play. Nobody's been taking it really, really serious just because you know, you got to do a little bit of YOLOing. Um, but let's go into the spy and let's take a look here at the candle that I was talking about. This bearish engulfing candle. So we gap up, we run a little bit, and then we sell down all week, closing right at this 420 area. Not a good look. You know, not really what I want to see going forward on a bullish tape. Now, I'm not going to be one of those, oh, it's the end of the world. We're going back to zero. I actually made a tweet uh, today that I'll share that I thought was funny. I was on Twitter and I saw that Black Monday was trending. And that's just kind of funny in and of itself. But I just put that that was bullish. <laughs> it's, you, know, you see Black Monday trending. It's probably mean sentiment's gone a little bit too far. But that candle is ugly. I would expect some sort of a follow through on that push lower before we can, can turn and push higher. Um, if we gap up and negate that, then that's going to be all the more bullish signal. I'm just not going to bet on that with this really, really ugly candle in the context of this little bit of a downtrend we'd be getting. So where are we going to look next? Well, we broke out from around this area. So I'm going to test that if we break through that, then we've got to start looking at lows here around 380. So 310, I'm going to watch below 310. We're going to watch 380. But as always, if we pull pull down into 400 and then start to move higher, then we just need more information. So not very excited to get long things right here. But I am always going to be keeping my eyes out building my watch list. I've said this many times, but just in case people are new here, the way I trade as kind of a relative strength and a trend trader is when the market is pulling back, I'm making lists of stocks that are showing strength or they're pulling back to interesting levels that I think they could hold. I'm making these lists, but I'm not really acting on them very much. I'm waiting for the market to turn and the market to push a little bit higher. Then I will be interested in getting involved and actually buying names. So even though I'm making these lists and you can have access to my list if you sign up for the email watch list, the idea is simply I want to be involved in keeping myself involved by building this watch list of strong stocks. Then if we get a reversal day in the market the way we had a couple of weeks ago when we reversed off that 420, then I'm ready to go. I have my watch list of relatively strong names, names that are at important support levels, names that I think are going to do well in a turn in a market, and I'm able to punch into those, right? It's uh, the work when the market is trending up, there's not a lot of work for me to do because my portfolio is going to be full. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I've picked the turn well, and I have a, a lot of names that I'm full on, I don't really have much to do except to manage the trades that I'm in. It's when the market is pulling back. And right now I have a lot of cash because a lot of trailing stops got hit. I'm building this list This for me is kind of when the work gets put in. So I hope that makes sense. It's this flow of being involved when the market's going up, the market pulls back, I sell, you know, I try to pick roughly where I think the the market's going to hold. I'm always, always, always building a list. And if if anything is just completely bucking the trend, uh, the market is moving lower, but then I pick a stock that's breaking out or ripping, then I'm going to like that stock more because it's showing relative strength to the market. Just getting a little warm here. I told you guys we've got to settle in. We've got many more charts to go through. So under the hood here, we have uranium, we have URA, pulling back and holding nicely. So again, I want to contrast this to what we just saw on the SPY. 
uh, especially on this weekly candle. We had this massive bullish reversal. We've been in this downtrend now. We topped out in August, and then we've been pulling back. So uranium is kind of the opposite. Yes, we topped out here late August, but we're not in this multi-stage pullback that the market is. We've pushed up, and now we're pulling back, and we're holding this 25 area. So uranium still looks interesting to me. Uh, oil did very well this week, considering the market had this kind of shakeout candle and then started to bounce higher. So I like the look of oil. Semiconductors, this is, I'm showing this one to show the rotation behind these things. So if we go to SMH, and we bring up semiconductors here, you can see this is actually looking a lot like the SPY and has this potential of a rounded top going back in on the weekly chart. There's a potential here that we have this rounding top action. If we break 140, we could push lower on this, maybe test this breakout we had right here, and then maybe test 120. So we seem to be having this rotation into energy type names out of semiconductors, which is fine, right? This is the um, this is the idea behind a choppy market. A choppy market, you're going to have some strong sectors, some weak sectors. Again, this is good for us who are active traders, not so good for people who are just buy and hold. Uh, it's a stick and move, right? I'm going to be sticking and I'm going to be popping and I'm going to be looking at different things. Now, here we are with IWC. So IWC is a ETF that is looking at uh, micro caps. So IWM, a lot of people know, which is the Russell small cap index, IWC is even tighter. And that is our micro caps. I'm looking at this because it's the very bottom end of like the really speculative uh, curve. If you're a micro cap stock, you're probably not making a lot of money, you're probably not super profitable as a micro cap stock. So this is how the market is treating these unprofitable tiny companies. New low has been absolute slaughter since August here on the daily chart. If we go to the weekly chart, you can see way, way worse than the market overall. And IWM is kind of the same, the same look behind this, right? Not doing well. So you can, and then let's compare this once more to the SPY. Uh, not Spirit Airlines, SPY. So the higher up we go on the cap, on the, on the cap curve, with micro with macro or mega caps doing very well, then small to mid caps not doing as well and micro caps doing really poorly. It, so it seems like you want to be if you're long, you want to be long, giant mega cap names. Now, are we going to get a rotation out? Who knows? But for now, this is definitely what I'm seeing in the market. So there are a couple names that I've added to the watch list. That I'm going to watch one is SN. We've taken some trades on this SN very recently. If we go SN, Ninja something, right? We got involved in this right here on this breakout. Decent little trade, nothing really to write home about. Now I kind of like the idea that it's pulling back. It hit this $40 area that was support right here. Bounced off it and now three days in a row pulling back, but a very small pullback. So I'm watching this SN very closely. Uh, NUVL. Uh, so we're going to go NUVL. This one I very much like because we're pulling back to this breakout area. So we've broken out, we've come back and we've pulled back. If this holds, then I like the look of that bounce off. CNRX, so this is part of the trade ideas relative strength scanner. So this is something we have in trade ideas that I built that is back tested and proven to beat the overall market. What's that? CRNX, Duh. helps if I spell it correctly. Uh, and the TI Relative Strength Scanner, again, just looks for stocks that are, are really beating the market. And that's where I want to be looking at when the market's pulling back. So nice just kind of um, rectangle or base break that I'm looking for on this one. Uh, BLTE actually is something that I bought this week. I will always disclose if I'm in something. But I bought this on a breakout over this zone right here on Friday. But I did highlighting it here because it still looks very, very nice. Nice, tight base break on this name. Um, Belly Bio, that looks like it continue. We have Groupon. 
And Groupon has been an absolute beast of a stock, putting in this very tight consolidation at highs. Then we have UEC, and UEC is a uranium play. So if I'm right about uranium and we're going to move higher, UEC is a way to play it. Also, UUUU is another way to play it. I really just like UEC because it's a smaller kind of junky type stock. So I think this one could continue higher. So thanks, everyone, for coming by. 15 minutes, not too bad. Longer episodes that we do on the weekends and we do these on Wednesday. I appreciate all the liking and the sharing and the commenting. The algorithm has really started to kind of pick things up uh, and, and growth is happening. So if you find value in this and you think other traders would find value in this free content, please give it a share, give it a like, comment, all that kind of stuff. And I will talk to you guys next week. Get away from the screens.